Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show, but this show does. In a world filled with endless opportunities, why would two men who have built 13 multi-million dollar businesses altruistically invest five hours per day to teach you the best practice business systems and moves that you can use? Because they believe in you, and they have a lot of time on their hands. They started from the bottom, now they're here. It's the Thrive Time Show starring the former U.S. Small Business Administration's Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark, and the entrepreneur trapped inside an optometrist's body, Dr. Robert Zutner. Two men, eight kids, co-created by two different women, 13 multi-million dollar businesses. We started from the bottom, now we we started from the bottom and we'll show you how to get you started from the bottom now we We started from the bottom now we Started from the bottom, now we're at the top Teaching you the systems to get what we got Colton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks As the father of five, that's why I'm alive So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi It's the CNC up on your radio And now three, two, one, here we go We started from the bottom, now we David, thank you for letting me come visit yeah, you, my friend. Thanks, Clay. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Well, today we're going to be talking about creating an ethical corporate culture. Now, this is, well, I think you're super qualified to talk about this, and so I'm <laughs> excited to get your, your feedback on this, because you played in the NBA for 14 seasons, Right. and the NBA is known, I mean, it gets a, a bad rap in some areas and a good rap in others, but there are players who are interesting characters. Right, absolutely. Um, and uh, uh, the league is known for having some great character people. And then there's also sometimes the, the, the music that's played in the locker rooms and the things that are said on the court are, are so profane that some parents kind of cover their kids' ears at the game. And so you see both extremes, right. but yet you carried yourself in an ethical way during your career. Well, I try to. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, except for those maybe one or two times. Very but uh, okay, so principle number one we're, we're teaching here is establish your business business ethics. And David, before you and I can really begin to ethically, I guess, begin re resolving these these uh, uh, teaching how or teaching people how to set up a uh, ethical corporate culture, mm -hmm. we have to kind of define what the word ethical means. Yeah, yeah. So, in your mind, what does it mean to be ethical? Well, I think I think uh, uh, one of my mentors when I came to San Antonio was. Um, McDermott, General McDermott, um, built USAA, huge organization, um, was a phenomenal uh, player in building San Antonio into the city that it is today. Uh, and and the, his, his rule that he lived by was the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm. And he, he built his whole organization around that rule. And I think that that's a great example of what corporate culture should be. People who know me know that my faith is a big, big part of who I am and, and how I approach things. But that doesn't mean everyone else shares my faith. But, but there are certain rules as, as human beings, as a society, that we should follow. And, and treating other people like you want to be treated, I think, is a phenomenal place to start. So uh, if you want to define what an ethical culture is, yeah. uh, I would say you could build your whole business around that, that idea. To, to, if, if I'm the customer, how do I want to be treated? And, and, uh, and proceed that way. And if you could teach everyone in your organization that mentality, then I think you have a great culture. For somebody watching this, just trying to give kind of the devil's advocate perspective of this, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you're very self-disciplined, or at least that's the rumor. So you're that's a guy right. who's all about high expectations mm -hmm. Absolutely. and reaching for something more mm -hmm. and press and press and don't stop. Right. So if you were going to just say I came to work for you, if somehow I, I was able to sneak in your organization and you hired me. So if, <laughs> I, if, I, if I'm working for you, I would guess that you would want to push me because you would want to be pushed. That's just my. No, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Okay. I, I, I think you need to. If, if, I wouldn't want someone to try to turn me into something I'm not. Mm. 
So I think that that's what that's what you have to understand is that, you know, my, one of my one of my personal rules is always put a person in a position where he can succeed. Mm. Some people have Michael Jordan type talent. Let him loose. Hey, that guy, just let him go. But some people uh, have, you know, the reserve type talent. Yeah. And that guy can still bring something to the table. He yeah. can still be a very, very valuable part of your organization. I mean, Steve Kerr was not known as this great, you know, superstar who d dominated everyone. But he had a role, and he did it extremely well. Yeah. If you put Steve in the right situation, he was going to kill you. So uh, my, that's my goal with every single person around me, whether it's a teammate or an employee. I'm going to figure out what they can do well. Mm. I'm going to try to put them in a place where they can be successful and, and let them go in that role. So you're, you're helping somebody here. So if, I, if I'm a small business owner and I, again, I average one as 10 employees or less. Right. And let's say that I'm hiring right now. OK, so I don't let's say I own a Chick-fil-A. Yes. And I'm hiring right now and I'm looking for an extroverted person to work the, the work the front. It's kind of a shame on me sort of deal as the owner if I hire somebody who's an introvert and I want them to be the extrovert dealing with customers. Is that right? Yeah, that would be that would be a mistake. Yes. No, you, you'd certainly you, you need to find what their abilities are, what their talents are. I mean, you, yeah, you, you certainly don't want to put someone um, if, if the guy's not a shooter, don't put him on the perimeter. You OK, know? you make sure he understands that and, and he can you know, play within the role of the offense. So, okay, this, this makes a lot of sense. Now, when you played for the, to the Spurs, um, you, you know, you were, you were known as one of, those, one of those good guys. And I think that what was neat, though, is that the Spurs, I don't know whether they did it to you or you did it to them, but you guys became known as a good guy team. Right. So, and again, again, I don't know with chicken before the egg. I don't know if you came in and were the good guy, and now the, the team became the good team, or I don't, I'm not sure if that was the ownership. But yeah. you guys were known as as a as a good guy culture. How did you specifically? Let's just go into the locker room. How did you lay out this uh, ethical culture in the locker room? What sort of yeah. rules did you did you put in effect there? Well, our goal was not to be known as the good guys. Okay. Um, you know, we, we certainly we we don't go about trying to say, hey, we're we're um, you know, any better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the goal at all. When we came in, um, I said, look, we're going to do things in a professional manner. Mm. We're going to do things uh, the right way here. So that means, you know, trying to get the right amount of rest, coming into practice, prepared to practice. Uh, it, it means having the right mentality and being team players. When we step out on the floor, I don't care about what your stats are. I don't care about how many shots you got yesterday. I don't care about your your salary paycheck. Don't, mm. don't bring that stuff to the floor. That's not what we need. We're going to do things the right way, day in and day out. If you're a role player, you do your job, you'll get rewarded. At the end of the day, somebody's going to want you because you did your job very, very well. Yeah. And, and so that's creating a culture. That is getting them to understand that success for the organization means success for the individual. Uh, and, and that way they can kind of fit in their role. So you, you define for people, we're going to do things the right way. It wasn't your goal to be the good guys, but you said we're going to do things the right way. Right. So let's go, in, let's go into the locker room. And here's, here's the situation. Uh, there's one small business owner I worked with a few months ago, and if you're watching this, this one's for you. But I was working with them, and they have a front desk person who um, listens to crazy music, like crazy, as in music that has curse words within a salon environment. Mm. So there's a men's grooming sort of environment, and yet there's music playing overhead with, with foul language. Right. And he talks to the front desk guy and says, hey, guy. Can we, uh, the owner says, can we, can we please stop doing this? <laughs> and this is maybe the third That's or fourth time. probably nicer than I would have been about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> and so I want to, I want to have you now come into the salon. Okay. So we're pretending that you're now, it's like you, you have been brought on as an advisor right. for the day. How did you deal with it in the locker room? Cause I, you, you know right. what happened there and how did you deal with it? How would you deal with it in the small business? Uh, well, we have to understand what the goal of the business is. Mm -hmm. So if the goal of the business is to bring in a certain clientele and that music does not match that clientele, then it, 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 we shouldn't be playing that music. Okay. It's nothing personal against me, against that person. We have different tastes. I have no problem with that. If you're listening to that at home, you do what you want to do. But in this place, we're going to do things that build uh, around the business. Yeah. And, and so you just need to be real specific about what the expectations are and you need to demand those things because uh, not because you don't 
you don't agree with this person or you don't like this person, but because it's what's best for the business. So what would you say, now here's an example, the same, same business, perpetually late employee. I'm sure in practice you probably had a guy who attempted to be late just to see what would happen, with it, to see if Coach Popovich would deal with it first or if you would or however happened. it would happen. So guy shows up to practice. Uh, let's say in this case he shows up to work 10 minutes late. Mm-hmm. How do you, how did you as the, as the captain of the team or how would you as an owner of a business process that? If, if, specifically, what would you say to me if I walk in 10 minutes late? Well, I think there's a lot of factors there. If, if, if he's doing that purposely. Perpetually. To, you, well, perpetually. But perpetually is fine as long as it does not affect the quality of their work mm-hmm. or the business goals. I, 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 I've never been one that's a stickler for times. Okay. I mean, if, if we have a business where you can work half the day yeah. and you can still get your job done, more power to you. I'd rather see you at home with your children. I'd rather see you get your children off to school. I don't know why this person's late. There's a lot of factors. Yeah. He, he could want to spend the time in the morning feeding his children and taking them to school. I have no problem with that. Okay. If that's what, if, if it doesn't affect the quality of our business, I don't want you to be there at nine just because it makes me look good that you're there at nine and I have control over you and I can tell you to be there at nine. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. Let's say that it did affect the team's goals. Well, then that's a problem. So how would you, and, how and would you deal we, with and that? And we would be very specific about that. Okay. Um, if it were, we're at a bank and it starts at nine and you have to be at your, your station at nine and you, you may not work at the front desk, but you may have a, a station over here where, for loans or something, but someone is going to come in at nine at some point to get a loan and you need to be at that desk. That's a different situation. Then um, that person needs to understand if they cannot make that work, then they are hurting the business and they don't they don't belong either in that role or with this with the organization. I just love how you focus on performance. You just you, it's black and white for you. It seems like there's well, no gray. I, I area. try to make things black and white. I I think if you can the more that you have defined, the easier it is to determine the outcomes. Mm. And, and so I always try to understand what's my role, what's their role, what's the goal. I, it, one thing I learned doing nonprofits is going back to the mission statement. You always go back to the mission statement. What are we trying to accomplish? If it doesn't help what we're trying to accomplish, it's, it's, a, it's a useless endeavor. What about um, the, 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 the personality type who tries to corrode the culture? Mm-hmm. So I'm sure, it, I'm sure, I, maybe it never happened on the Spurs, but uh, other teams, um, but you know, <laughs> other teams. Uh, uh, other teams. Uh, but you know, w- w- what happens to the player who is trying to stir up something between another player? They're, they're trying to, you know, that, that yeah. kind of, that personality that's for whatever reason trying to create animosity. Yeah. You can't quite pin them on it, but you just, you know what I mean? They're always trying to, to yeah. do, how, how do you deal with that? There's always people like that. And I, and I think, there's there's a couple things you need to consider and first of all is do you actually have a culture established mm. so i mean if you don't have one established it's very hard to deal with a person like that because there are no expectations there you don't know they don't you can't specifically call them out on the types of things that they're doing because there's no real culture but if once you have a culture um which at the spurs we always did have a great culture we, we there was when you came in you knew what you were getting into yeah. and you, you knew what um what you what we expected of you so it was very easy to call someone out when when hey, you're doing things detrimental to what the team is about this is we don't talk about your salary we don't talk about it to the media we don't talk about it in this locker room that's your business has nothing to do with what we're trying to accomplish mm. on the floor uh so that was very clear and if people came in and they started whining about salary or they started picking fights with other individuals, uh, then that was clearly unacceptable in our organization. So everyone, I'm just I'm writing this down because this is really good nuggets here. You said we always go back to the mission statement. Always mission well, statement. Let me ask you this. Again, in America today, nine out of ten of these businesses are small businesses. Mm-hmm. Some of them haven't taken the time to write a mission statement. We're so busy, we don't have a mission statement. My first suggestion would be sit down and write a mission statement. Okay, all right. So that's a great Understand action step. Understand where you're headed. Understand who you are, what your core business is, and, and what you're trying to accomplish. Because everything you do needs to go into that. That's great. Uh, if it doesn't go into that, then you're wasting your time and energy. Love it. And I know like at Thrive, you know, our purpose is to help provide uh, mentorship and entertaining education for entrepreneurs. That's our, our niche. Mm-hmm. And um, it's our focus. And I, I think that on, on the Spurs, your goal was to win championships. Absolutely. That's your mission. Absolutely. And, do it to, and to do it the right way. Right. Was there a certain mission statement that you remember them having or something that was kind of like a... 
Um, or was it really just to win the no, championship it was the to, right it way? it was to win. But in order to win, we felt like we had to build the right team. Yeah. That was a real key. And I, I guess there's an analogy there with business. You have to build the right team. You have to, you have to build an organization that can withstand uh, not only the competition of the day, but the changes for tomorrow, right? So you're trying to build this team that's flexible, that's intelligent, that works together well, that, um, that is focused. And, and so that's what I felt like when I came to the team, how do I get us from here to there? Mm -hmm. um, we were not a very competitive team when I came. How do I, how do I help move this organization over here so that we can be competitive? What was your team's record when you took a, when you uh, the year before I came in? We won twenty one games. We lost 60, 61 games. And then what was your rookie year? How did you do? Because you're all NBA, I think your rookie the, year. The right? rookie, my rookie year, we went from twenty one wins to fifty six wins, and we lost twenty six games. So we pretty much flipped the uh, flipped right. the record, which was great. But but. You know, that was, there was a lot of other factors that came yeah. together at the time. We had a new coach that was a, a, a very good coach. We had um, some players that we had brought in, which, which were fantastic. But it was the beginning of a change in culture. And we consistently, over the last 20-something years, yeah. have, have been at a high level because that culture was established and has grown. Um, principle number two. Develop progressive disciplinary procedures. Mm -hmm. Now, David, I see this a lot um, where you see a small business and every time someone does something, they say, I'm, I'm going to talk to Danny. I'm going to tell Danny when he, you know, I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to him. We'll be talk, we need to have a meeting. And there's all this talking in meetings, but there's no disciplinary procedure. There's right. no expectations as to what happens next. or So it's all these empty threats. And it's, and it's again, it's a bunch of small businesses where they're, they're stuck. They're not growing. Right, right. And the key, I think, of a small business owner is to win. To make money to feed your family by Absolutely. providing value to customers. Absolutely. You don't want to stay small. It's not a badge of honor to be a small business. We want to grow and be a big business. All right, JT. So hypothetically, in your mind, what is the purpose of having a business? Um, to get you to your goals. So it's a vehicle to get you to your destination. Whoa. And would uh, you need profits to get there? I mean, is the, is the, when you have a business that's successful, in your, in, your mind, in your expert opinion, would you need profits to get you to your to get you to your to your goals yeah because if you have a 15 million dollar business but you have 15 million dollars of expenses it's kind of pointless holy crap all right so the question i would have here for you if you could take like i don't know 10 minutes or less and see if you could save three thousand bucks a year by reducing your credit card fees would you do it yes absolutely holy crap why would somebody out there who's listening right now who has a sane mind why would they not uh, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card to schedule a 10 minute consultation to see if they can reduce their credit card fees by at least 3,000 bucks a year why would they not do it? yeah why would they not do it? Um, maybe because they didn't understand how you set the website <laughs> this tree is a symbol of the spirit of the Griswold family Christmas no, that's that's clear. Okay, so that that could be a, that could be true. So I would encourage everybody to check out thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. Thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. What would be another reason why someone would not be willing to take ten minutes to compare rates to see if they could save three thousand dollars or more on credit card fees? Maybe they think it is a waste of time and that it won't. It's not possible. So there's somebody out there that's making more than three thousand dollars every ten minutes, and they're like, nah, that's not worth my time. Hello. We getting there, right money. Huh. We getting there, right money. There's probably some someone out there. Okay. They would think that. Well, I'll just tell you, folks. If you're out there today and uh, you're making less than uh, three thousand dollars per ten minutes, I would highly recommend that you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. Uh, it, it because you can compare rates, you can save money. And, you know, the, the big the big goal, in, in my opinion, of building a, a business is to create time freedom and financial freedom. And in order to do that, you have to maximize your profits. Holy crap. Now, one way to maximize your profits is to increase your revenue. Another way to do it is to decrease your expenses. It's a profit deal. <laughs> it takes the pressure off. JT, is there any other reason why somebody would not be willing to take 10 minutes to compare rates to see if they could save a total of $3,000 a year on average? I am at a loss and I cannot think of any other. Shampoo is better. I go on first and clean the hair. Conditioner is better. I leave the hair silky and smooth. Oh, really, fool? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Stop looking at me! 
looking at me, Swan. Well, let me tell you a good story here real quick here. I actually, uh, years ago, compared rates uh, with this company here called IPS. It's Integrated Payment Services. And I, I scheduled a consultation. I I don't know that I was skeptical. I just thought, whatever, I'll take 10 minutes. I'll compare rates. I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? And in my case, in my in my case, my particular case, I save over twenty thousand dollars a year. Holy crap! Wow. Which is, uh, you know, like uh, groceries when my wife goes to the organic stores. Find everything you need today. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Oh god. No. Everything okay, ma'am? Oh, uh, it's just that you've only scanned a few items and it's already 60 bucks. Uh, I'm so scared. Okay, I'm a trained professional, ma'am. I've scanned a lot of groceries. I need you to stay with me. It's just that my in-laws are in town and they want a charcuterie board. Well, this isn't gonna be easy, so I need you to be brave, all right? What's your name? Patricia. Patricia, all right. I need you to take a deep breath. We're about to do the cheese. You know, that's the yeah. difference between eating delicious. organic and not organic. So because my wife eats organic, I had to take the 10 minutes needed to compare rates to save the $20,000 a year on credit card fees just for one of my companies. One question, what's the brand name of the clock? The brand name of the clock, Rod, do brand we have it? The brand name of the clock, it's an elegant from Ridgeway. It's from Ridgeway. Let's, let's buy. Buy the clock. And sell the fireplace. So I encourage everybody out there, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. You schedule a free consultation, request information. A member of our team will call you. They'll schedule a free consultation. It should take you 10 minutes or less. Uh, and they're going to compare rates and see if they can't save you more than $3,000 a year off of your credit card processing. You were hoping what? I wouldn't owe you money at the no, end of the day. No, you don't owe us money. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, the goal of a business is to create time freedom and financial freedom. And in order to do, and in order to do that, you need to create additional profits. is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We it was a system that we that we followed with Thrive in in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the four hundred eleven percent shows that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was ninety one percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months. Or I'm sorry, the first we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. So. 
Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like I said, the diligence and um, consistency in doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, with, with our with our business. Um, and we, we were in a rut and we didn't know... Oh, sorry. The last three years, our customer base had pretty much stayed the same. We weren't shrinking, but we weren't really growing either. Yeah, and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go, what to do, how to get out of this rut that we're in. Uh, but Thrive helped us with that. You know, they, they implemented those systems. That they taught us those systems. They taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed. Now it's been a grind. Absolutely, it's been a grind this last year. Um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into them. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I wanna to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours. On the day-to-day, -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, gra and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13 step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like 
Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and that's what I like him most about him. He's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time um, who went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't. His highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. As you can see, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing, and this is our new team. We went from four to 14, and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past, and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman, so we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts, and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. The Thrive Time Show, two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look him up. 
and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same system that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever, and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you, and we're excited to see you. If you go back eight years ago, think about the, the number of clients you had back then versus the number of clients you have now. As a percentage, what has been the growth over the past eight years, do you think? we got to well, inspire somebody out there who just well, doesn't have the time to listen to okay, their calls. Okay, so, Clay, it's, it's, it's like I would go up and down from – uh, about ten thousand dollars a month up to about forty thousand was up and down roller coaster and so now we we've, we've got it to where we're in excess of a hundred clients that's awesome and so i would have anywhere from five clients to 20 clients on my own with networking but i had no control over it i i, I didn't without the systems you're going to be at the. You're going to be victimized by your own business. For the, somebody out there who struggles with math, if you let's say that your average cl number of clients was thirty and you go to a hundred, as a percentage, what is that? I I have grown. I have doubled every year since working with you. So I've doubled in clients. I've doubled in revenue every year. It's a hundred percent growth every year I've worked. With. Now, so so I'm looking. We've been. Good friends, seven, eight years, and I've got doubled five times. Which is just incredible. I mean, the first time you do it, that's one thing. But when you do it repeatedly, yeah, I mean, that's we're unbelievable. Work, we're working our blessed assurance off this year to double. We're planning on doubling again. We're incorporating new some, some, some new things in there to really help us do it. But we are going to double again this year. I started coaching, but it would go up and down, Clay. That's when I came to you as I was going up and down, and I wanted to go up and up instead of up and down. And so that's when it needed a system. So creating a system is you have nailed down specific steps that you're going to take, no matter how you feel, no matter the results, you lean into them and you do them regardless of what's happening. You lean into them and it will give you X number of leads. You follow up with those leads, turns into sales. Well, I tell you, you know, it, it's if you don't have a script and you don't have a system, then every day is a whole new creation. You're creating a, a lot of energy just to figure out what are you going to do. Right. And the best executives, Peter Drucker is a father of modern management. He said, the most effective executives make one decision a year. What you do is you make a decision, what is your system, and then you work like the Dickens to make sure you follow that system. And so that, that, that's really what it's all about. So with a script here, I, you know, I, we have a brand new gal that just came, came in working for us. She nailed down the script, and yep. she's been nailing down appointments. Usually, we try to get one appointment for every 100 calls. We make two to 300 calls a day per rep. Right. And she's been nailing down five and eight appointments a day. Somebody out there is having a hard time. On that script. What's, so she's making how many calls a day? She's making between two and 300 calls a day. Whoa. And our relationship is weird in that we, we do, um, if someone were to buy an Apple computer today, yeah, and uh, or, or let's say you bought a personal computer, a PC. The computer is made by, let's say, Dell. But then the software in the computer um, would be Microsoft, let's say, or Adobe or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, make, I basically make the systems, and uh, you're, you're like the computer and I'm like the software. It's kind of how I would describe our relationship. Yeah. Tim, uh, I want to ask you this. You and I reconnected, um, and, uh, I think it was in the year 2000 and, uh, what was it, maybe 2010? Is that right? 2011, maybe? Or maybe, maybe further down the road. Maybe 2013? 2012. Okay, so 2012. And uh, at that time, I had I was five years removed from the, D, from the DJ business. And you were how many years removed from tax and accounting software? Uh, it was about 10, 11 years. We met. Um, how did we re-meet? What was the first interaction? There was some interaction where you and I first connected. I just remember that somehow... You and I went to Hideaway Pizza. But do you remember when we first reconnected? Yeah. Uh, well, we had that speaking thing. that. Uh, oh, there it was. So yeah. it was Victory Christian Center. I was yeah. speaking there. My name is Robert Redmond. I uh, actually first met Clay almost three years ago to the day. I don't know if he remembers it or not, but I wasn't working with him at the time. I asked to see him, 
and just ask him some questions to help you know, direct my life, to get some mentorship. Uh, but I've been working with Clay for now just over a year. Uh, the role I play here is a business coach, uh, business consultant. I work with different businesses, implementing uh, best practice processes and systems that I have uh, learned here uh, by working with Clay. And the experience working here has, to put it real plainly, has been just life changing. Um, I have not only learned new things and uh, have gained new knowledge, uh, but, but I have gained a whole new mindset um, that I believe wherever I end up uh, will serve me well throughout the rest of my life. Since working with Clay, uh, I have learned so much. I mean, I would like to say almost everything about, about business in terms of the different categories. I haven't learned it all. Uh, but I've learned all about marketing. I've learned about advertising. I've learned about branding. I've learned how to create a sales process for organizations in any industry. I've learned how to sell. Uh, I've learned how to create repeatable systems and processes and uh, hold people accountable. Um, you know, how to hire people. It just, it's, it's almost like every aspect of a business you can learn. I have learned um, a lot in, in those different categories. Uh, and then, Again, the, the mindset that I've gained here um, has been huge. You know, uh, working here, uh, you, can't, you, you can't be a mediocre person. Um, you are uh, a call to a higher standard of, of excellence. And then as you're called to that standard here, you begin to see those outcomes in every area of your life, uh, that standard of excellence that, that you want to implement um, no matter what you're involved in. Uh, I would like to describe the other... Uh, people that, that work with Clay uh, are people that are going somewhere with their life. Uh, Marshall in, in the group interview uh, talks about how uh, you know, the, the best fits for this organization are, are the people that, that are goal-oriented. So they're on their own trajectory, and we're on our own trajectory. And uh, the, the best fits are those people where there can be a, a mutually beneficial relationship, that as we pursue our goals, uh, and we help the business pursue those goals, the uh, business helps us pursue our goals as well. Uh, and so I'd say people that are driven, people that want to make something of their lives, uh, people that are uh, goal-oriented, they're focused, uh, uh, and uh, they're committed to overcoming any adversity that may uh, come their way. Clay's passion for helping business uh, owners grow their businesses is it's, it's unique in that I don't know if there's anyone else's that can be as passionate. Um, you know, whenever a business starts uh, uh, working with Clay, uh, it, it's almost as like Clay is, is running that business in the sense that he has something at stake. Um, you know, he's just serving them. Uh, they're, they're, they're one of his clients, but it's, it's as if he is actively involved in the business. Whenever they have a win, he's posting it all over his social media. He's shouting it across uh, the, the room here, here at Thrive. Um, you know, he's uh, sending people encouraging messages. He can kind of be that, that life coach and, and, and business coach in terms of being that uh, a motivator and that champion for uh, people's businesses. It's, 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 again, unique because there's no one else I've seen uh, get so excited about and passionate about other people's businesses. The kind of people that wouldn't like working with Clay are people that are satisfied with, with mediocrity, uh, people that uh, want to get th through life by just doing enough, by just getting by, uh, people who are not looking to develop themselves, people who are not coachable, people who think that they know it all and they're unwilling to change. Um, I would say those are the type of people. In, in short, anyone that's content with mediocrity uh, would not like working with Clay. So if um, you're meeting Clay for the first time, the advice I'd give you is uh, definitely come ready to take tons of notes. Uh, every time Clay speaks, he uh, um, it gives you a wealth of knowledge uh, that you don't want to miss. I remember the first time that I met Clay, I literally carried a notebook with me all around. I was looking at this notebook the other day, actually. I carried a notebook with me uh, all around, and I just took tons of notes. I filled the entire notebook in uh, about, about three or four months, uh, just from being around Clay, following him, and, and, and learning from him. And then I would say, come, come coachable. Uh, uh, 
be, be open to uh, learning something new. Be open to challenging yourself. Uh, be open to um, learning and, and adjusting parts about you that, that uh, need to be adjusted.